Clark County Today is presented by Connell Real Estate. Hire an agent, get a team. Learn more by visiting ConnellRealEstate.com. Hello everyone, Jacob Graneman here with your Clark County Today Thursday night update of the stories we're following for you. Let's take a look. Our two tightest local races in the November 3rd general election got even tighter when the Clark County Elections Department released its second set of results Wednesday in the race for State Representative Position 1 in the 17th Legislative District. Incumbent Republican Vicki Kraft trimmed the lead of Democrat challenger Tanisha Harris from over 1,600 votes on Tuesday night to 869 votes after Wednesday's report. In the race for the Clark County Council District 3 position, Democrat Jesse James had an advantage of over 1,100 votes votes over Republican Karen Bowerman Tuesday night. However, that lead was cut to just 216 votes Wednesday. The results are expected to be updated each day this week at 5 o'clock. On Tuesday night, the first set of results included a total of 220,476 ballots of Clark County's 324,642 registered voters. Wednesday's results included the counting of 16,342 more votes. On Thursday morning, Clark County Auditor Greg Kimsey told Clark County Today that he estimated there are about 40,000 more ballots to be counted between now and when the general election will be certified on November 24th. Kimsey indicated that 35,000 of those ballots should be counted by the end of the day on Friday. Stay tuned with ClarkCountyToday.com for updates. Earlier today, Clark County public health officials reported another death due to COVID-19 in Clark County, bringing the total number of pandemic-related deaths to 72. In addition to that death, public health officials also reported 69 new cases of COVID-19 since yesterday. The total number of reported cases is now 5,233. The number of active cases in Clark County is increased to 291. As reported on Monday, the rate of new cases continues to rise, currently sitting at more than 131 cases per 100,000 residents. That rate is up from just over 86 on September 28th, just five weeks ago. There are currently 35 cases of COVID-19 in Clark County hospitals and another 11 under investigation. 68% of licensed hospital beds are occupied in the county and 11.7% of licensed ICU beds are occupied. 8% of licensed hospital beds in the county are occupied by COVID-19 patients and patients under investigation. Investigators from the Southwest Washington Independent Investigations Response Team, with assistance from the Lower Columbia Major Crimes Team, are actively investigating the circumstances that led to the officer-involved shooting that resulted in the death of Kevin E. Peterson, Jr. In an effort to achieve increased independence in the investigation team, Clark County Prosecutor Tony Golick has requested Lower Columbia Major Crimes Team members take on the team commander and lead investigator roles for the investigation. Chief Criminal Deputy Troy Brightbill with the Cowlitz County Sheriff's Office has been assigned as the team commander. Detective Ralph Webb with the Longview Police Department has been assigned as the lead investigator. And Detective Sergeant Scott Boyles with the Camas Police Department will be the team leader. Earlier this year, Golick assigned the review of an officer-involved shooting of the Vancouver resident William Abe to the Thurston County Prosecutor's Office. Golick said the investigation into the officer-involved shooting of Peterson, both the Clark County Sheriff's Office and Vancouver Police Department are too closely involved for one to investigate or review the other. If anyone has information about this incident, they are asked to please contact tips at cityofbg.org. Some exciting news for families with students in the Vancouver Public Schools. The district looks like it will have a on-time graduation rate for the class of 2020 at an estimated 90%, a significant increase from the 2019 rate of just over 85%. Among VPS High School's Fort Vancouver High School Center for International Studies, preliminary rate indicates the greatest year-over-year -year gain from 75% in 2019 to an estimated 83% in 2020. More than 1,300 VPS graduates received diplomas in June. Administrators said they credit rising graduation rates to sustained collaborative efforts at each school and throughout the district. Over the past decade, graduation rates have improved by almost 26 points, up from 64% in 2010. The gain is also attributed to more than a decade of work in several areas of the district's strategic plan, including standards-based curriculum, instruction and assessment practices, early learning programs, and collaboration with early learning providers, upgraded facilities, and new technology tools to allow students anytime, anyplace learning. The official graduation rate will be certified by the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction in 2021. 
The Camas City Council workshop and meeting went long on Monday evening. The Camas Washougal Fire Department budget and the addition of new personnel were hot topics. In 2019, five new positions were added to cover cross-staffing issues where fire departments cover each other. Washougal was facing a funding deficit and Camas has taken on a larger share of the bill for one year. The fire department now wants to add four more positions next year to further reduce cross-staffing and improve response time, but Washougal still lacks funds to do so. Chief Nick Swinehart explained the cross-staffing issue in an interview with Clark County Today. I'm Nick Swinehart. I'm the fire chief of the Camas Washougal Fire Department. I've been asked to explain how we staff our stations here in the Camas Washougal Fire Department in the, uh, the communities of Camas and Washougal. We currently have three fire stations. Uh, the fire station in Washougal is staffed with four personnel. The fire station in downtown Camas is staffed with four personnel, including the battalion chief, who's the officer that that uh, supervises the entire shift. Here at Station 42 in Grass Valley, which is where we're at right now, uh, we typically, not always, but most of the time do what we call cross-staffing, which is where we have two personnel here at the station, and what vehicle they get on depends on the type of call. So if it's a fire call, they will get on the fire engine, and if it's an ambulance call, they get on the ambulance, and that's what we mean by cross-staffing. They cross back and forth between units depending on the citizen's need when they call 911. So that's, uh, that's how we deploy and staff our stations currently in the city. The council expressed concern that the two city councils may not be on the same page and conveyed reluctance to hire any additional personnel until the funding issues over current personnel were resolved. Washougal has expressed concern over asking voters to raise taxes, and Camas counselors said they were against imposing a utility tax. Go to ClarkCountyToday.com to read our full story. We appreciate all local businesses who show support for veterans. Paul Valencia went to Camas to find an interesting salute from a historic theater that will be showing a classic movie set in World War II. Hey, Paul Valencia here in downtown Camas, outside the historic Liberty Theater. This veteran would like to say thank you to the Liberty Theater for having a Veterans Day salute. Saturday, Mr. Roberts, the 1955 classic starring Henry Fonda, will be shown. The movie will be shown again on Wednesday on Veterans Day. Again, it's part of the Liberty Theater's way to say thank you to the veterans. And it's also my all-time favorite movie. Go to ClarkCountyToday.com to read my column on why this movie is so special to me, and I hope to see you at the Liberty. Well, there's a look of the stories we've got for you at ClarkCountyToday.com. Be sure to check in with us on social media through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube to see when stories are posted and join the conversation. You can send us your story ideas and feedback to our email, news at ClarkCountyToday.com. From all of us, thank you for watching. Have an awesome night, and we'll see you again tomorrow.